Hello, everybody. So today is Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, the 2nd of May. Uh, I'm just here in the workshop today. I'm after doing a little bit of painting and a little bit of uh, varnishing. So we'll just see. I've done a few of these. This is the first coat of green paint. I've done a few of these. This is the first coat too. And I'm going to do a couple of these large green and I'm going to paint those too. Now, I was at a market yesterday um, and it was a market in Bremore Castle, not far from here in Balbriggan. Um, I believe it was the first market of its type uh, that was part of Bremore Castle. The problem was, <laughs> the problem was that often is the problem in Ireland is the weather. It was appalling. It really poured rain. And it rained all day. I think there was a small gap in maybe about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that, where it wasn't actually raining. Um, and this kept the people away. I mean, it really did. In spite of all that, I managed to sell quite a number of items. I sold quite a few of the Finnish Green Ladies and a couple of the Small Green Men. And I actually sold a few of these. These are the, the larger Green Men as well. So <clears throat> basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to repaint. Uh, I'm going to have to paint the, the stock that I have now so I can replenish. Uh, was the market worth it? I guess it was because... I established a rapport with a lot of people. We spoke to a lot of people, to fellow artists, if you can call them artists. I mean, a lot of people, customers, people who were there at the market, who wanted to have a chat. And they're interested in the, in the grind. They're interested in what you're doing and what you're making and that sort of thing. And I made a few contacts there, a couple of people who are connected with, with future markets and uh, people who exhibit stalls and things like that. So... Yeah, and I mean, I sold a few. I didn't sell a lot. I don't think... I, I Obviously, I, I believe that the weather didn't help the situation. I mean, if it had been sunny, there probably would have been 10 times more people. I mean, that rain, you just wouldn't leave the house, really, unless you had a choice in the matter, I think. But uh, there was a, a number of people turning up, and they were they were kind enough to support support the artists who were there. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a complete disaster, and um, there are going to be a few of those... A few of those markets on over the next uh, over the summer i think as far as august so i will put my name down for any ones that might come up so if people are wondering you know can you can you uh can you make money at markets yeah of course you can yeah you can but i think that you probably need to have depending on the on the on the on the sort of market that it is because i've done the alternative market now the alternative market you've got more people who are what you might call gothic people alternative people with tattoos and people who are interested in wicca and that sort of thing and that that my my niche appeals i think to them because i have things i've got skulls and pentagrams and i've got green man green woman this sort of thing from uh, mythology and from the earth power and the earth forces and that sort of thing so it very much appeals to people like that almost automatically so that's that will be they're almost the target audience for the sort of thing that i would make um yesterday where you had basically ordinary people and uh, a surprising number of the ordinary people bought you know my kind of thing which is you can have a look at me on instagram it's uh, scary's underscore rock underscore art you can have a better look at what i do there's a few of my videos here where i show you what i have um and there was quite a lot of people turned out and this is well a few people turned out but quite a lot of people bought stuff this uh, i won't say it surprised me exactly but i think the reason is and like i'm i have no desire to blow my own trumpet but i think the reason is that the, the quality was there and i think people recognize if you do a quality product and if you um if you if you have nice products you know people who you might think might be slightly outside of your your target audience as such they would probably just buy it anyway and um and that's good there was uh craft markets have a lot of the same kind of items um you see a lot of hessian bags and you see a lot of jars of honey and things like that and all these people have their uh all these products have their adherence people will buy that sort of thing um this isn't my 
my bag I'm I'm just making the I'm starting making the crafts with the concrete Herculite that sort of thing and um, I'm finding that people are actually interested in buying it so I'm hoping that this is the beginning or part of the beginning of the growth of this uh, this little cottage industry that I have going on um, and uh, if you're interested in, in in partaking in this this journey as such um, like and subscribe and uh, and hopefully I can keep going with, with more and more videos. So, <coughs> pardon me. Today, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna paint a couple of these things. Whoops. Excuse me for one minute. <laughs> the videos are just appalling so um, I'm not a videographer you know I just make these things I'm not a videographer <laughs> so uh, I just do this for I just do it for the fun you know this is um, called campus acrylic green acrylic this green man is uh, concrete I made the concrete myself in a previous video so it's uh, two parts of fine sand, one part of rough sand, and one part of cement powder. And I also used a, a cement activator, a concrete activator, which is called Evo, Evo Plast. It's also an emulsifier. Anyway, that was made approximately, I don't know, four weeks ago, something like that, four weeks ago. So I leave it so that it goes good and hard. And now I'm going to put this on. This acrylic will go on to concrete very well. It goes on much better if the acrylic is, is wet down. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'm just going to put on a wet, the watery acrylic there. I'm using a big brush. Uh, this brush I got from Lidl. And it does, it does the trick. <laughs> My God. I'm sorry lads, this is just terrible. I can't hold my the really cheap um the cheap tripod I got is just terrible. It's just terrible, it has just collapsed on me. So I think I need to get myself a proper tripod if I'm gonna be doing this sort of thing. Otherwise it's gonna be even more unwatchable than previously. Probably given the video watching this probably getting a great laugh. Okay. So listen, I'm not a video, I, I can't do video and editing either, so I'm not going to, there, there's going to be no editing out the bad bits. Whatever happens is happens and it's going to stay in, it's going to stay in the video. So if anybody knows anything about video editing, maybe they can get me, get in touch with me and tell me how I can edit out the bad bits of these videos because I'm really showing up my, uh, my failings in this regard. Okay, so like I said, the wet acrylic wet acrylic goes on to this uh, concrete green man getting lots of paint on there and i want to get all of it covered okay dark green acrylic this thing's quite heavy it's probably i don't know probably if i was to guess it's probably three or four two kilo three kilo something like that of, uh, that's the dry the dry weight so important to have a fairly robust hanging hook this is a coat hanger that i embedded down into the concrete when it was wet because you need a uh, you need a reasonably good hanger to, to hold that to hold the weight of it and I, like i say i sold a couple of these yesterday and people were very happy with them they were very happy i actually like this myself i think it's very nice i think the uh, the detail in this is, is very very nice and also the size of it is fairly impressive now there's some swallows or swifts i'm not sure some bird or, or other <laughs> they have been coming in and out of this shed. This is a big high ceiling. They've been coming coming in and out of here, flying around the place, uh, and then going away again, and making an ungodly racket. I don't know why they come in. Maybe they're attracted by the light. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to get the we're going to get the paint into all of the parts here, and uh, you know, there's no real. Uh, this is not a matter for great finesse. This is a matter for. Just coverage. 
can see it's starting to take shape. So I think I've got most of it painted in the acrylic, which is good. Um, if you look on the back, see the back is black, which I painted that with um, exterior masonry paint. Now the reason I paint the back of it with the masonry paint is because it's a lot cheaper than the acrylic. And probably most people don't need to see the back so it doesn't necessarily the back doesn't necessarily need to need to be green like the rest of it and also the masonry paint gives it a uh, another layer of protection against the elements of this is concrete that's going to last probably probably forever i hope so anyway i suppose it's interesting question to ask yourself I don't know if you're making something like this and it's hanging in somebody's garden like just how long will it be there I mean how long will it be there will people be enjoying it 50 years from now maybe 100 years will it be enjoying it in generations to come I'd like to think so that'd be really nice okay so this is our uh, the green man there has just gotten its uh, its acrylic. Can you see? Okay. So I'm just going to put him aside. He's going to dry overnight. I have another one here. Okay. So this one is. Uh, Actually, this isn't concrete. This is uh, the one that's made from Herculite. Okay, so Herculite is very tough um, gypsum plaster. Uh, it's ideal for making interior interior mouldings and casting. That's actually what's what it's intended for. Um, Herculite sets very hard. So with this, with items made from Herculite, in order to make them outside proof, I will uh, glaze them with yacht varnish after I've added a couple of, a couple of layers of this um, acrylic paint. Now, I did an experiment. I had a Herculite, there's the, the words back. <laughs> I made a Herculite skull and I left it in the back garden. This was a year and a half ago without any painting or any kind of protection or anything like that i was just curious to see how long it would last and it's still fine it's still fine so it does last out outdoors but in the interest of the um of your of your items lasting longer i recommend that if you're using herculite for outdoors that you paint it and um, paint it again and then glaze it something like yacht varnish or poly polyurethane varnish just uh, makes it last that much longer okay so we're just giving it a, a good going over with the, the acrylic paint and there's a couple of little couple of little bits in the eyes are quite deep set so we we'll just go in there with the paintbrush make sure there's nothing left behind because there's nothing worse than when you're finished your, your painting and then <coughs> there's a white patch peering out at you the light in this particular shed workshop isn't great it's uh couple of overhead uh, tubes I should be sitting outside really but uh, the weather is <laughs> like the Irish weather tends to be as inclement at the moment so I don't want to have to keep running in and out I'm just giving this uh, thorough coating of green paint so I'm hoping that you know I sell a few more of these I made a couple of them early uh, uh, about four or five weeks ago I cast them I've left them to harden up and uh, like I say I've sold a few yesterday so um, I'll probably put them on put them up on Instagram and uh, let's see if I can set a few more of them 
the problem with this now, um, they're not on my Etsy page, and the problem is because they're heavy. I mean, they really are. <coughs> I can deliver free within Ireland for, well, like I say free, it costs me five euro. That's that's for the um, for the postage label. If somebody in America wants this, the weight of it, it, the postage is going to be far, far more than than I can sell it for. And this is this is a problem. I don't like having to refuse people. It's terrible, especially a, a customer, somebody who likes your stuff, and then they say, now you say to them, I'm sorry, I can't deliver it to you. Um, it's it's unfortunate. Even in the UK now, it's become a problem. Buying or sending things because of the, um, the UK is no longer in the uh, the EU, so there all the customs are opening everything, weighing everything, charging customs duty. It's just not, it kind of takes the fun out of it in many ways. I don't want to be levying huge amounts of postal, uh, postage fees on top of the all, uh, the, all, the cost of the, of the items that I'm making. That's, I like to try and keep the stuff affordable. Um, this is not going to be expensive. I call, I'll charge 20, 25 euros for this, something like that. I think it's worth it for my time, for the, the reasonable amount of effort that went into it. So, to my mind, it's worth 25 euro. If you, people seem to agree, but then if you say to them, oh, well, like, I mean, I'm going to need 50 euro for postage. It's, it's not the same anymore, you know? So, at the moment, this sort of thing, I can only deliver within Ireland, um, or send within Ireland, so I don't I, I don't have it on my Etsy page, which is a pity, because the, the Etsy page seems to be taking off now at the moment. Um, there's a thing called search engine optimization, and I think we have X amount of traffic on your page, um, it shows up in Google searches and it shows up in searches and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I haven't quite reached that point yet, but um, like I say, I just can't put the heavy items up because it's unfortunate. Okay, so this is what our little guy looks like. This is just with one coat of uh, the green acrylic paint. Have a look there. You can actually. It is. It, I, I think it's very cool. I think it's very, very nice. It's a, it's a fantastic mould and it, it makes a really nice casting. Just make sure there's no bits that I missed. Yeah, just a few more bits. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside to dry as well. So, yeah. I'm just going to do this one now. I sold a couple of these yesterday. Um, they always sell. Um, I make them in concrete. I make, and in this case, I make it in Herculite as well. Um, I have a few in concrete that I have already painted. I brought, I think I brought three of them to market yesterday. So I sold the three, which is, which is good, you know, it's good. But I just have to keep painting them, keep going, make more, and keep going. Of course, the problem is time, you know, just everything takes time. I was up this morning, uh, this bank holiday Monday, I was up this morning and when we were away in Romania, I got a thousand um, leaflets, good old fashioned paper leaflets, I got those printed up and they had, you know, a picture of this, they had a picture of the green lady, a picture of this, that and the other, Instagram handle, Facebook page, my phone number, all this good old fashioned paper, paper advertising, paper marketing, there's no good having paper marketing without getting them distributed. So this morning I went up, drove over to Scary's, dropped into a few businesses. They took labels off, or they took the, uh, the leaflets off me, threw a few in through the letterbox. No junk mail, plenty of junk mail from me this morning. Um, met a couple of people, had a couple of chats. Uh, invariably positive feedback from people, which is great. That's what you want, but you have to, I'm hoping to get out there and you know, I need to I need to, uh, to sell my brand. I'm hoping that this will be a successful brand. And in order for it to be a successful brand, I'm going to have to put the work in. Unfortunately, at the moment, though, I've only got me. I'm the only person who works here. And uh, I'm limited by, as my mother used to say, I've only got one pair of hands. Yeah, <laughs> I've only got one pair of hands. So I can make the stuff. But I can only make it so quick. So I... I <laughs> Although I want people to buy, I don't want them to buy too fast or too many just yet. But uh, yeah, I was putting the name out there anyway. There's photographs of the stuff and met a few people, told them what I was doing. 
And I said, would you mind taking this, uh, this leaflet, put it in your shop or your coffee shop, whatever it was. Yeah, no problem, miss. No problem. So hopefully that will happen and uh, get a bit of interest in a few sales. So I think the uh, thousand leaflets were about 50 euros they were, each one of that size. Of course, for there to be out any of them with me to show you, I have them on my um, Instagram page. So 50, 50 ish euros, something like that. A thousand of them. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'd say I got rid of a couple of hundred this morning. Nah, maybe not. Maybe about a hundred. I don't know. Maybe exaggerate. But uh, delivering leaflets actually, it takes time. If you hand deliver them, yeah, that's fine. People walk by, you just hand them to them, they go, thank you much. Uh, putting them through a letterbox, which apparently is junk mail, nobody likes it anymore, but that's hard work. That's, uh, that takes time. I think even the letterboxes now are designed so you can't just put a leaflet through easily. You've got these kind of four things or whatever they are, like um, things inside the, the letterbox to stop the, <laughs> stop the leaflet going through. Anyway, so that's that's what I was doing anyway. I'm going to, going to rack my brains, think about how I can get rid of a few more of these leaflets. Maybe get a few more people interested and sell a few more products. So that's the whole that's the whole idea. That's why I moved to this shed or this workshop here, so I could kind of upscale a little bit. And it's still it's limited by as quick as how I as quick as I can make this stuff painted and all the rest of it, but. Absolutely no complaints. I am this is my hobby and I'm hoping it'll turn into a business. I'm very happy with the situation. I have to be honest with you. Okay, so I mean I guess the key to success is consistency and enthusiasm. I don't know too much about the success just yet, but certainly there's more success than there was. And I am enthusiastic and I try to be consistent and hoping to step my game up shortly each day okay so there's our the green man painted now if you look you see the back of him is white so I'm going to use the black masonry paint you don't need it to be green at the black or at the back so it's going to be black at the black black at the back I'm actually tired this morning it just Barely doing this, that, and the other. So we're putting the black masonry paint on there. One coat is enough. <laughs> so the the words are back in again. They're definitely they're coming in here for some sort of a reason. There must be I don't know. There must be insects or something congregating in the roof of this building in there. Coming in chasing it. It's funny. But this is really the countryside, I mean, or this um where the workshop is is the depths of the countryside, you might say. So there's plenty of birds around.